with another episode of Automation Unplugged. Uh, here for episode number 117, 117. And uh, of course, as always, uh, one uh, Automation Unplugged is brought to you by my day job over at One Firefly. And uh, just going to go ahead and check the Facebook feed to make sure that we are live. As uh, uh, I always do, you know, have to make sure we get technology behaving. So bear with me here. Let me see if it looks like we are live. Got to update the Facebook page. Okay, there it is. Yeah, it looks like we are live. All right. And, uh, Let's go ahead and just uh, without further ado, let, let's jump into the interview. Today, I've got uh, Brian Nakian. Uh, he's president of Acadian Home Theater and Automation. And again, today is Friday, May 8th. It is uh, about 1235 p.m. And uh, let's go ahead and bring Brian in. Let's say hello. Not yet. Oh, we go. There you are. All right, Brian. How's it going, bud? Going good. How's everyone doing today? Super duper. Uh, wh where are you coming to us from today, Brian? I, I see theater seats. Yeah. So uh, we're here at our showroom, our experience center in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And we are in the theater, um, probably because it has the best acoustics uh, in our building and not in my uh, cold, boring, sad office. Yeah, Brian and I were 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 playing with technology. As I, I, for those that don't know that are that are watching or listening, uh, I always get started a little bit earlier with my guests just to make sure we get all the technology behaving. And uh, uh, Brian and I were doing dealing with some technology gremlins here, but uh, I think we beat them down, and uh, it's coming through loud and clear, uh, Brian. So good job on on getting us into a, a good space for that. All right. Uh, and it looks like our feed is live. If you're out there watching and listening, don't forget to say hello. Uh, uh, drop us a comment. Let us know where you're coming to us from. And as we uh, dig in and, and have some fun talking to Brian, uh, don't be shy. Make sure to, to pose any of those questions you might have for Brian. So Brian, um, first of all, congratulations. I, I know the CE pro 100 just came out and you made the, the top 100. I don't actually, I, I should have prepared better. I know you were in the top 100. I think you were maybe in the sixties or seventies, but, uh, congratulations. And this, this was not your first time. No, no. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Look, being anywhere in the 100, uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, obviously we're, we're nowhere near the top. We saved that for the, for the big guy. Some, uh, my peers, my buddies are, uh, they occupy that space, but we're happy to be part of the top 100. And this is our eighth year in a row, uh, to be in the top 100. So kudos to our team. You know, they do all the hard work. Um, you know, it was a, a good team effort for us. Now I do know that you just so happened you did, you did beat your buddy Henry from live wire. Did. did you did. not? Is there a little bit like of a fun rivalry there where, where you guys have fun trying to vie for the, uh, I, I know anything in the top 100 is amazing, but uh, there has to be a little bit of, of a little fun rivalry or, or am I making that up? No, I have some with a couple of guys. Uh, one in particular in Arizona, uh, we have a steak dinner bet on it, but he merged with another company. So he was disqualified because now they're twice the size. Oh, uh, so nice. He got DQ'd from the bet, but we had a seven year running bet. And uh, seven of those years, uh, I enjoyed a steak dinner. Uh, but I won't be getting it this year. <laughs> yeah, not this year, not this year. And uh, we did no. just have uh, Kelly drop in. Kelly said hello <laughs> from Colorado Springs, and congratulations on making the top 100. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Um, Brian, for those that don't know you, I know you and I have known each other for many years. I want to say probably more than 10 uh, or so. Uh, I know I met you early in, in my Firefly career. I, I started this back in 07, and I, I want to say you and I met each other pretty early on. Um, 
but some of those listening maybe do not know you. They don't know about your business. Can you kind of, you know, take us down memory lane and kind of what got you into this business? Sure. So uh, this is 18 years of business for us, uh, for our company. And, um, you know, I never thought in a million years I would have a, a company, if you will. Um, I, I never thought we would be where we are today. I never thought it would be a multi-million dollar company. I, I didn't have those those dreams and those visions at, at that point in life. I, I love doing uh, this sort of work. I love installing technology. I love pleasing our customers. Um, I love the look on their face whenever they sit down and they hear music and they hear certain you know, music they haven't heard in a while, it takes them back, right, to that first concert. They sit in the living room. They're like, wow, I can remember, you know, this concert vividly. Um, those experiences are what I love. And so that's kind of how I got started doing this. Um, my background is in residential and commercial security systems. So I worked for a couple of local companies and then uh, at Johnson Controls, where we managed uh, all of Louisiana state government buildings um, for fire alarm, access control cameras. And I was doing this on the side kind of as a hobby. Um, and I'm sure you've heard it many times before, the hobbies grow, right? Uh, and this one started too as well. Um, and I was really fortunate to have an amazing wife uh, that had a really good income at the time. So I could quit my job and focus on on doing this full time. Um, and here we are, um, you know, all these years later, uh, there's 18 of us. Uh, we're in a 10,000 square foot building experience center office work all over the country. Um, you know, it's an honor to, to be recognized by our peers, certainly. Um, and it's, it's been a, it's been a very fun journey. You know, there's been their challenging times as with any business, the ups, the downs. Um, but we've enjoyed a lot more ups and downs. It's, it's been really fun. What, what does your business look like today? Uh, and I'll just say outside of the COVID stuff, like, uh, and maybe nothing's changed there, but you said you mentioned 18 people, um, what type of projects do you guys do? Do you do mostly resi, mostly commercial? Uh, uh, and, and what are typical projects for your firm? So we're probably 80, 20 residential commercial. Um, we do, uh, what's the new term? Uh, resi commercial or whatever the new, the new buzzword is out there. That's, I guess that best describes us. We do sports bars, conference rooms, executive suites, that sort of stuff, restaurants. Um, that's about the extent of our commercial work. Um, I, I have some good friends that kill it in the commercial space and they're nice enough to share information. And that's certainly an area we would like to grow the business in the future. Um, but that's kind of our commercial, uh, what we do commercially now, um, residentially, um, you know, we have historically focused on very high end residential. So the luxury market, uh, and that's still the bread and butter of our business. You know, the, the homes that are five, thousand living to 35,000 living. Um, but we do smaller projects as well. We have a couple of, uh, semi-production builders. They'll build 50, 60 homes a year and they'll, you know, use us to do some pre-wiring alarm systems, cameras, that sort of stuff. Um, but primarily it's that luxury residential market. And that's been our bread and butter for all the years we've been doing this. Got it. Understood. You just got a shout out from uh, the one and only Hagai over there from access network. So he says, hello from LA congrats on being part of the ce pro 100 so thanks man i appreciate it that great is, guy we also have a uh, hello from mexico so we got on hell he says welcome brian saludos from mexico thank you so um let's talk about there's some weirdness going on outside hopefully we're on the better side of it uh how are you guys dealing with this i know that I, i've received a lot of feedback both uh, phone calls and, and emails people telling me they've appreciated hearing from their their friends and peers and people they look up to and just kind of hear how everyone's coping what what is life like for you guys right now it's uh it's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs, both, I think, emotionally and mentally as well. Um, you know, whenever this first kicked off or we first started hearing about it, um, I thought, OK, it's the flu, right? No big deal. Nothing to see here. Move on with your life. And then as we started to progress, especially in Louisiana, where the cases were astronomical, uh, we knew it was serious. Um, so what we did as an organization first is communicate to all of our all of our staff, our employees, just to make sure they were safe, their families were safe, and that they felt safe and secure as well. So um, we, in our office, our office staff, 
what we did is said, you know, if you're willing to come to work, we're still open because we're an essential business, but we're going to mandate that you have to work in, in your office with the door closed. There's no face-to-face -face interaction. And my warehouse guy is basically every hour on the hour uh, cleaning every touch surface, doorknobs, the bathrooms. He's mopping the floors. I mean, he's basically like, you know, a very high paid cleaning person at this point. Right. Um, but we just want our people to feel safe. Uh, from our employees that are actually out in the field, our technical staff and our service staff, you know, we wanted to make sure that they were safe and felt safe. So any of the PPE equipment that they wanted, you know, mask, gloves, uh, hand sanitizers that they felt comfortable using, we provided for them as well. Um, and then we made a few decisions in the company that I don't know that they were popular or not, but again, our, our people's safety was the number one goal. And so Orleans Parish, which has been the real hot spot of South Louisiana for this, uh, we just said we're not going. Uh, we have a lot of customers there. Um, you know, we, we told them that we will support you remotely, as we always do, especially using some of our great partners like Parasol. You mentioned Henry earlier, um, Greg Simmons, those guys. And, um, and that's actually worked out pretty well. We've only really had one or two instances where they really need a site visit, but we've asked them to wait until the governor lifts the stay at home order May 15th. And then we would come on site to their homes. Um, and then our scheduling coordinator will ask all of our customers before we schedule to come out. Uh, have you been exposed to COVID-19? Has anyone in your family been exposed to COVID-19? We have a lot of healthcare professionals we do business with uh, just to make sure that, you know, while they may have been exposed and they may be on the other side of it, or we even had one instance where they had COVID-19, they were totally fine now, but we still decided not to go to their house because it just, uh, again, the, the employee safety is important and their peace of mind too, to know that we have their back more than anything. You know, we've always told our customers and our people that they are more important than money. People are always going to be more important than money to us. And so that's been the biggest thing, you know, our, if you go outside and you drive around South Louisiana, you almost wouldn't know anything's happened because there's a lot of people on the road. A lot of businesses are still open, um, but there's just this feeling of, you know, uncertainty. Um, everyone, I think, is out of rhythm. You know, everyone's routine is completely wrecked with, you know, restaurants and healthcare and um, schools. Schools. I mean, I, you know, hey, look, I love my wife. She's watching. I love you. This isn't a knock, but she cut my hair. That's why I look like I'm right out of the military. You know, <laughs> well, it's better than my. It's better than this. I, well, I'm that's what I had going on. I'm that's desperately in need on. of a haircut. So everyone's I've actually got some comments like, Ron, do you ever not wear your hat? I was like, no, <laughs> not right now. I need a haircut. Yeah. So that's, you know, those are the big things. And, and you know, I think people by and large want people to be safe and comfortable, right? In whatever way they feel that's appropriate. Um, but I think people are just ready to get back to work, get back to normal. Um, we're really fortunate that we have a fantastic client base. So our guys have been busy. Um, we are still working every single day. Um, we haven't, we haven't had to lay anyone off. We haven't even thought about that. Our guys are still getting their hours. They're still uh, completing projects. So from that standpoint, we feel, we feel blessed. Uh, Cause I know the situation is different in other areas. No, there's different parts of the country that are, uh, sure. I, was, I was just on the phone this morning with uh, my friend, Ken, He's with uh, Sapphire Marketing. He's the, amongst other things, he's the Crestron rep up in the Northeast handling New Jersey, New York. And uh, and he described to me that it's just, I mean, to say utter devastation is putting it mildly in terms of what the the businesses in those markets are dealing with. Yeah. Um, you know, sad. It's, uh, it's, it's sad. It's hard. He yeah. says he spends so much of his time every day just counseling his, fr his friends, his customers, that he's known for the last 20 years, you know, there's guys talking about uh, fear of losing their businesses, fear of, of, uh, and, and, or just the mental anguish of having to lay off their team that they know and they love. And it's just, if there's no money moving, it's what, what other options did they have? Um, right. especially if they didn't get, uh, uh, the PPP, right. If they didn't mm -hmm. get the government money, uh, and, and, or there's the pressure of, well, I think I'm going to get it, but I have to have it by this date or the money's run out. I can't pay my people. And so I'm going to have to let them go. It's just, um, 
so varying situations going out there in the marketplace. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that you guys are able to uh, stay busy. I want to dig deeper into that, but I'm thinking, um, and, and I, uh, I'm going to put it on the screen. Uh, this is my wife, Danielle, but it looks like my son, Max is watching. And uh, he says, hi, dad, uh, this is Max. So, uh, hey, Bubba. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> I think that's maybe Starting the them off early. That's it. Starting them off early. He's got to see how it's done. Uh, we also have uh, a guy. He says uh, the same here. He says it looks like the East Coast is hit the hardest. And, okay. uh, you know, he says uh, the PPP is complicated. It, uh, it certainly is. At best. Did you, Brian, did you guys apply? Did you guys get any good news or bad news? What happened there? We did. Um, you know, we use one of the big national banks for the bulk of our money, uh, just, you know, modernized banking and that sort of stuff. But I have a relationship with uh, a community, local kind of like four branch bank. Um, so I was in touch with uh, my person over there who's the vice president. Um, and he's been phenomenal from the very beginning of this. Um, our application process was seamless and smooth. Um, you know, they had their regulations. So it took a few weeks for the PPP to be funded, but it was, um, and he's been great with just, you know, make sure you follow these specific exact guidelines and you're going to be okay. And so we've been, uh, we've been doing that. So again, that was another area where we were really, really fortunate, um, to have that relationship. And that's kind of what I've heard from my peers in the industry, you know, several guys that I'm, I'm really connected to, um, that went to their local community banks, um, got their money. And guys that were dealing with some of the bigger banks, the national branded banks have have struggled and, and not seen really much of anything. Yeah, I've, I, we we deal we do our banking uh, with a, a local <laughs> regional bank, and uh, uh, we applied on the fourth and were funded on the ninth of last awesome. month. And uh, it really proved. And our 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 leadership team, we had formed a relationship with our bank, so they they knew who we were. Mm -hmm. They knew they knew who we were in advance. And, uh, we weren't, you know, trying to engage for the first time. Cause it's, it's hard when you really need something to, you know, you're at that point, you're potentially a number, you're not a name. Yeah. And, uh, it sounds like you did the same. You, you were buddies with one of the executives or friends. And right. so they, they knew who you were. I mean, that that's life is unfair. And the fact is that helps. Yeah, absolutely. Relationships. It's all about relationships. I mean, what we do is all about relationships. I mean, you know, like you said, you and I, we go way, way back. Um, yeah. I, it was definitely a CEDIA that we that we met uh, many, many moons ago in Denver. Uh, yep. But it is. It's all about relationships, certainly. So maybe that's a, a strategy that guys will take away from this when we get back to normal is uh, fostering some of those relationships. I, you know, when I started my career out early on, you know, this is probably going to sound terrible, but I was like, I don't really care about my industry peers. I don't care about, you know, seeing a rep or going out to dinner. I can buy my own dinner. I'm my own man. I'll make, I can do my own thing. And, and my wife was really instrumental in helping me see that that was short-sighted and, and stupid really. And some of my best friends in the world are now guys in this industry. Um, you know, guys that, you know, I've fostered relationships with, um, you know, executives at other manufacturers, uh, you know, that all of us use and buy their products. And so I've gone out of my way to foster relationships, not to necessarily get anything out of it. Um, but, you know, looking back at those decisions, you know, the relationships are what's carrying a lot of us through, you know, being able to be a part of a group of guys, you know, four or five of us that, you know, I'm the smallest guy there as far as revenue, like they're, they're 10 times my size, but to listen to, some of their advice and things they're going through and financially they're able to really help through this process as well. Like these are the things that we've cut. These are some things that we're doing. These are some strategies that we've taken. And uh, it's been awesome to be able to, to glean from those guys too. Now I think the, the importance of uh, relationships and people in your life, whether they're peers, their family, but also the team and, and your vendors and your, your, your staff, I mean, thanking them and making sure that they know they're valued and important to you. Uh, I'm going to tell you again, I, I was young and dumb. I'm, I'm not saying I'm smart now, but I was dumber when I was younger. And uh, I, I could certainly 
uh, think back to times when I was very much about me and very much about just going forth, you know, and, and charging forward and making things happen, not realizing that I'm enabled to do that because I'm standing on the shoulders of so many that are supporting me. Right. And, and that's really instrumental. I think it's just part of maybe getting old. <laughs> you realize that that's uh, yeah, definitely amongst other things for uh, sure. <laughs> amongst other things. Um, now, uh, and Hagai posted another comment here. He's he's making a comment regarding PPP that it won't last long. So, where, where I'm curious for you, Brian, and uh, and and I'm asking many folks that I, I talk to on a regular basis, what is biz dev looking like for you? Right. So many integrators stay booked out. Uh, or they were going into this, say, in early March. Many folks were booked out two to six months in advance. And uh, there was then a point where we're frozen and not allowed to go to job sites. But there's the concept of filling the funnel with new work. And what what is that? I'm curious. What did March and April look like for you guys? Were you able to uh, uh, take in inquiries and, in fact, close business? Uh, and it, and or was it at a, a lower rate than say you had forecasted prior? So the way that our business here has historically gone is January is awful, February is a little better, and March we really start to pick back up. And we were tracking along that trend. In the first week of March, we were really it was looking really really positive, and then the wheels fell off the bus, and March was abysmal. Um, April, it's. I can't explain it, but April was amazing for us. We had a great April. We had uh, new business. Now, when I say new business, I don't mean it's customers that we've never dealt with before. Um, that's with any business, any integration business, you know, 80% of your business comes from referrals, right? And your existing customer base for the most part. It's like that for us as well. Um, so we certainly had some new customers inquire and we were able to close business. Um, but we, we had a really strong April. You know, the good thing about an integration business is it's very cyclical um, in a way that's a positive through this time. It certainly is. So, you know, we closed jobs 18 months ago, 24 months ago that we're still working on today, just due to the nature of the size of the project and the scope uh, with construction and stuff. So um, we were still even though we weren't closing jobs in March, our guys were still busy. Um, and even though it took, you know, the cycle of closing those jobs in April, we were still busy uh, and we predict that May will still be busy. Now, the end of the year is going to be crazy busy for us based on. I was about to ask, how's your outlook for the balance of 2020 looking? Yeah, we think the end of the year is going to be crazy busy just based on construction cycle of jobs we've already closed. Um, I, I've been telling people that I'm not worried about March, April, May, not really June. I'm worried about July, August, September. Uh, those are the months that concern me. Now, Louisiana has a double whammy, right? Because we have hurricane the, season. Well, we have hurricane season. That's unpredictable. But we have oil is in the toilet and we're an energy state. Right. And so when oil isn't good here, a lot of things aren't good here. Um, Baton Rouge is a little insulated from that, but not a ton. So we don't really know what that ripple down effect is going to look like for us. So. I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm always optimistic about it. I think that I do think that we're going to be down from where we were last year, but I don't think it's going to be more than a couple of percentage points. Um, I, I don't see how we would, we would maintain that exact number based on the current market conditions, unemployment where it's at, you know, on and on and on and on. So some of the buzz I've been reading about, uh, and again, I'm just going to say, because this was in the news just yesterday, Crestron announced they were going to be back at CD after five years. Hmm. Um, it's good timing. An immediate question I have is, do you think CD is going to happen? And if it is, would you uh, go? Like, what, what's your read on that? So I do think CD is going to happen. Um, it's in September. It's enough time. I mean, if they have sporting events, they'll have CD and, and they're, I just don't think they're not going to have, you know, football. I, I really think that they're going to find a way to make that happen. Uh, however that looks. And, and, you know, maybe we know more about the virus by then anyways, right. Than we do today. Um, I go back and forth with CD every year. It's one of those things where I'm like, I'm not going. And then it gets two weeks before and I'm like, okay, I'm going. Right. 
and I'm always thankful that I did. Um, it is, you know, you do take the time out to go, um, and the travel and, you know, from being in Baton Rouge, it's not easy to get anywhere except Dallas and, you know, Atlanta, which Atlanta was the worst CD in history. Right. So they'll never go back there. Um, but I, you know, depending on where we are with our knowledge, our understanding of the virus, um, you know, some more scientific data will dictate whether or not I go. Got it. All right. So you're, you're holding it out. You're not making the decision one way or another, uh, no. but your, your feeling is that the event's going to happen. I think so. I think so. And I don't think Crestron would have announced that they're going uh, unless they had a very strong feeling about going because the time and the planning it takes to pull it off. Think of the scale, cost of a booth. I mean, if you're a vendor and you're mil- spending they spend millions of dollars, millions of dollars, right? You have, and you're not just going to forecast that out 90 days. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I guess I'll reserve the one Firefly opinion. I won't use this forum yet for that, but uh, I will post a uh, guy's comment. He says, uh, "Large venues will be the last to come back. Jury's still out on Cedia." So I, no, I, I, to- I totally agree, and it's going to be region specific, right? Um, you know, the more you get to the coastal parts of the country, Californias and New Yorks they are definitely going to be the last to come back to any sort of large gatherings. Um, well, and are the dealers, I, right? I mean, what's a show without the customer? Are, are, are your peers yeah. going to be going to an event? And if they're going to an event, how many of your, your teammates, your crew, are you going to bring with you? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's complicated. It's be, it, it, it very much is. I guess you could do some sort of a virtual something. Maybe. I don't know. It's a, uh, it's, I think it's too, I think it's too early to tell from our speculation standpoint, but again, the vendors, I mean, they've ha- the manufacturers have to be planning, right? And if Crestron made this announcement, then you would think that they are, um, they are confident it's going to happen. Yeah. So, but who knows? Yeah. Who, who knows that? That is, that is fair. Now you had mentioned a minute ago, uh, and her guys agreeing with us, but you had mentioned a minute ago about, uh, Parasol and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good friends personally with Joey over at one vision and the whole crew of, uh, uh, Ted, Greg and Henry over at Parasol. Um, and I just had Henry on the show, although our, our audio, uh, unfortunately, uh, abruptly got cut off at the end of the show. We were 45 minutes in. Um, what is, uh, for those listening, uh, what did, uh, finding a service solution like that or a, a customer support solution like that mean to your business and how does it work for you? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I mean, we looked, um, you know, Joey with one vision. I mean, he was the Christopher Columbus of the, of this, right? Like he was the first to kind of forge the trail. Yeah. And that probably didn't work in his favor because he had a lot of change, pivot, change, pivot, change. I mean, it's the nature of being first. Right. Um, so I think that benefited the guys at Parasol a little bit. They saw what worked and their dealers as well. Right. So uh, Simmons was a dealer. Um, Henry is a is still owns his integration firm and Ted ran one as well. So they had the benefit of that knowledge. Um, not to say Joey didn't, but not on the scale of those guys with the length of tenure of those guys as well. Um, so, you know, Greg Simmons and I have been good friends for a long time. You know, he's he's one of the finest people in this industry. Um, and, and, you know, being being who he is and with his trust in the industry, it's easy to to kind of get behind what he's doing. Um, so for us, what made sense with Parasol more than any other solution or platform out there was twofold. One, it was, you know, to a lesser degree, the relationship I had with Greg and with, with Henry and those guys. Um, but the biggest determining factor for us was their, uh, tight partnership with snap AV and the oversea platform. Mm. Um, we've been deploying oversea products since they started. Right. So, um, that's our preferred power networking surveillance, kind of everything. Right. And, we, we wanted everything to be built into Oversee, not even knowing there was Parasol coming, but it just made sense for our business model to be able to remotely and instantly service our customers. And we were doing that in-house, painstakingly so. Um, but when they brought their platform to the market, 
um, it made a lot of sense for us. So we tried it out with a couple of our actually really good customers and it was a very, very high success for us. Our customers loved it. Um, and our ultimate goal with it is that they are our service department that if, you know, Joe Smith has a problem on Tuesday at 9 a.m., he doesn't call our office. I mean, he's obviously welcome to, but the idea is that they would call the parasol number and that they would be their first point of instant triage to work on the system uh, for all, all of our customers. We don't sell a system today that's new and we don't upgrade a system today that doesn't include at least one year of parasol. It is mandatory to do business with us. And in reality, 600, and we don't do the, they have two options. We do the $600 a year one. We bill it annually. It's 600 bucks a year. It's not a lot of money, um, especially for what you're getting, in my opinion. And so our guys have been really, really happy. You know, our on-call time has gone down by like 80%. And that was a big thing. You know, we rotate our technicians and our service guys being on call. And there's two problems with that. The first problem is that they've worked most of them an eight, nine, 10, 12 hour day. They go home, have dinner, and then they got to answer calls. And that's that I I wanted to eliminate that because family time is important. Um, The second thing is most of my guys are older. And so like I go to bed really early. So if you try and call me at 1030 at night, you're, I turn my phone off. I'm in bed by nine. When are you in bed? by? Yeah. 9.30. 9.30. 9.30. 9.30. Yeah. So I'm up at, I'm up at 5.30. So yeah. So you're not going to get me uh, on the phone that late. And that yeah. was a problem with our guys. And so we marketed it as 24 seven support. It was really not true though, because if you called us at one o'clock in the morning, you're getting voicemail mm-hmm. no matter who you called. Um, but with Parasol, that isn't the case, right? Somebody um, will answer had, at 1 a.m.? A hundred percent. Yeah. And that's a big selling feature. So we can tell someone, look, if you're you know, coming in from a late night of traveling and it's midnight and you want to put on Netflix and you have an issue, there's someone that's going to be there to instantly support you. And so um, our on-call texts are now just a backup, right? So if it's a Saturday and there's a family function or a ball game and something doesn't work and the remote service doesn't fix it, then we have someone that can go out on that Saturday or Sunday and we offer that service as well. I I was uh, just admiring your beautiful new website. So this is where I'm I'm tooting the one firefly horn. Thank you for trusting yeah, us works. to build your new site. Um, yeah. and We've I been very happy with it. Oh, thank you. Uh, it it is uh, it is inter- it is cool. By the way, everyone that wants to go there, that you can see the URL. It's aci experts uh, dot com. Uh, but I was actually noticing, and I was I, I should have looked at this in advance. You do not have your service plans on your site yet. So, but yet you right. made the comment that every one of your customers signs up for some plan. What is that? Do you mind going through what that sales cycle is? Like, when do you let clients know you have plans, and when do you actually convert and and get them signed up and is it always a paid plan or is there a $0 plan where they maybe get less service after hours right. or is it always a paid plan? So our existing customers that they don't, they've been doing business with us forever. Right. And there's not an upgrade or something like that. They'll call in and we'll try to convert them to our, our paid service plan. And if not, that's an option. They don't have to, right. We're still going to service and support them. And there's an hourly fee. We let them know, kind of those charges up front and what that'll be for the, for us to go ahead and take care of it. Um, but for our sales cycle works like this. So if you call us to do business with us and we're going to give you a proposal, we're, we're going to do the network in the house. I mean, that's a non-negotiable for us to, to take care and manage that. Um, so we use a uh, snap AV's Arachnus router. It's got the overseas pro hub built into it. And so in our proposal software, as an accessory to that, we put one year of the Parasol 24-7 support. And then we give them a cut sheet of what all that entails as well. And then they have a form that they have to sign uh, agreeing to that support as well. Um, so that's, that's in the proposal stage. We let them know as we're going through the proposal, we're going to be putting in XYZ for you. Um, that the router part of your networking also includes this component of it as well. 
And, you know, they get some other things. We, we put the Oversea Home app on their device and they're able to do some rebooting as well. And I did see something from a European dealer uh, on LinkedIn that we're going to copy. Uh, I can't remember what his name is, um, but they actually on their Control 4 touchscreens uh, have a service page that allows them to reboot things as well. I thought that was genius. We just have the people use the Oversea Home app, but if it's already inside of the Control 4 app. Um, so shout out to whoever that was. Um, yeah, was, we'll have neat. to, if you can find who that was, we'll make sure to put them down on the show notes on, uh, yeah. when we, when we grab this video and put it on our site, we'll, yeah. we'll yeah. give those folks in Europe a, yeah. an appropriate shout out. And, uh, yeah. and so, uh, um, but that, but that's how we do it. Right. I, I didn't want to make it like an optional thing. Um, because we believe in it so strongly. It's not something that should be optional. Again, it's six hundred dollars a year. It's appropriate for every single job that happens. You know, even if you just install a wireless network in your home, the fact that we can monitor and maintain that. So I'll give you a quick story. So we have a customer. We just put a system in. Um, so it was a Thursday afternoon. Uh, he sent me a, a text message saying, I think the dining room speakers aren't working. Can you check it? Immediately, I got an email from Parasol saying that the audio matrix switcher was offline. He then called, then, then my homeowner called me like a minute later and said, Hey, I just got a phone call from Parasol saying that my audio matrix is offline. Could that be related to the dining room speakers? I said, It could. Let's reboot it and see. Well, Parasol had already rebooted it. It came back up. I said, Let's just take a look at it and see. But I had my office alerted to kind of be on standby. So, about an hour or so later, we got another alert. The audio matrix was offline. So we, we didn't even roll a truck out there. We immediately called the manufacturer. We had made it. So the, the next morning, we had a brand new one. So by 9 a.m. the next morning, we had replaced that product uh, in his house. Now, that process would have been much longer without something like Parasol because they're letting us know information. We would have had to roll a truck. We would have had to do some diagnostics. We might not have got him a replacement part before the weekend. Um, you know, based on shipping times and cutoffs and that sort of stuff. Um, but because of the monitoring part of what they do, um, it really helped us to be, uh, you know, Johnny on the spot. And he was blown away. He said $600. He goes, I would pay $6,000 for this service. Wow. Um, just at how responsive it was. And so, you know, I know guys do charge more for it. Um, there are, case by case instances like super large estates and, you know, multi-million dollar systems out there that they should frankly be paying a lot more than the 600 a year. And we have those plans as well and they get other things, but 99%, we just stick at the 600 bucks a year. It's fair to the customer. Um, I think the money that you'll make by being a great service partner to them anyways is astronomical more than whatever you could charge them for, you know, the service plan. Hey, have you ever had a customer go, no, I don't want that service stuff. No, I don't want support yeah. nights and weekends. We've had, we've had a few, uh, let's say we presented to a hundred people, maybe three or four have blown back. And so we tell them after the first year, you can opt out, but it is included in the first year. There is no opt out. It's priced in. First, it's priced in. And after the first year, you can opt out of it if you so choose to. Um, and to my knowledge, no one's opt out yet. Wow. That's, that's because impressive. once they're used to the service and they're using it, I don't think they want to give up having that instant service where they can literally pick up their phone no matter when it is. They're going to get somebody on the phone right away. Brian, I got one more question for you here uh, because in about 10 minutes here, I'm in South Florida. The, uh, the Blue Angels jet fighter stunt team is about to nice. fly over our house. And my 11 year old is very excited and we're going to go outside and, and watch that. I would be um, excited too. And I'm much older than 11. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm pretty excited as well. Yeah. Uh, but that's uh, they're, they're supposed to hit Miami at one fifteen, and between one fifteen and one twenty five, they're going to be flying over our neighborhood. Yes. Uh, but I have, I have one more quick question for you just for the, the, the gang that are listening. Um, You've grown a very successful business, a uh, well-respected business over the last 18 years. And as you said, there's been ups and downs and I don't know of a business that doesn't have that happen and doesn't, you know, I don't think you're running a business if there isn't some drama every now and then. Um, for those that are, are listening or watching, what's a piece of advice or two uh, that you wouldn't mind sharing with them? Something that you'd, you'd recommend either how to deal with this time right now 
or something just bigger picture just uh, in general? I think the big thing is you have to, number one, be focused on your people. Um, your people are your most valuable asset. You know, I, I remember, again, you know, youth, uh, not, not super proud of these thought processes or statements, but I remember very early on in the business, um, I'm not someone that needs a lot of attaboys or pats on the back. Um, I know that that's not everyone, though, right? People need it and they deserve it, frankly, as well, and they should get it. And, you know, I was always like, hey, you know, you're going to get a paycheck. Thank you. Right. You know, but that's just very short sighted and, and kind of egotistical as well. Um, your people, you are where you are because of your people. That's it. Plain and simple. Um, there's no way that this business would be where it is without our people. Not even close. We have some of the finest, most dedicated, most honest, humble, hardworking, you know, people on this planet. We are beyond blessed to have them. So I would say, first and foremost, appreciate your people. And it's not just with money. Uh, money only goes so far. It's not with title. That doesn't mean a lot to people. But it's about really caring. You know, it's about being part of their world. You know, I, I'll tell our, our new potential clients sometimes in sales meetings, you know, um, we are like a family here. You know, I know things about our guys that sometimes I wish I didn't know. You know, I know pets' names, certainly know all their kids' names. I've been to their kids' weddings and uh, you know, seeing babies being born and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And it's just part of having a small business has been fantastic. So I would say, honor your people, appreciate your people, tell them that you love them, tell them that you're proud of them, tell them that they're doing a good job, put your arm around them. You know, that's, there's no substitute for that sort of stuff. That's kind of first and foremost. The second thing is to be obsessed with customer service. You know, I often tell people that if you're not obsessed with customers today, you're probably out of business soon. You know, too many times in our industry, we rely on new business. You know, there's nothing like the taste of a new kill, you know, right? And so you, you've been chasing the big fish and you finally get it. But that victory is very short lived. It, it really is. Um, but if you're obsessed with customer service and servicing your existing customer base, like you just won their job the very first time, um, like they're a brand new customer, um, that's, what's going to carry you through the hard times. You know, we've been really blessed and really fortunate that our customers, our long-term customers are the one that helped carry us through even these times as well, because we've treated them with respect. We've treated their home with respect. You know, the big thing is just do what you say you're going to do. You know, people understand we're people, we're human, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to fall short. You know, um, when we do a sales presentation, we usually talk about some of the bad stuff, right? It is going to break. It is electronics. You do deal with a cable service provider. Um, anyone that tells you that they're going to come in, you're never going to have an issue and you're never going to have problems, just run because that's just not reality. And people, I think they respect honesty. You know, if you call them and say, look, I dropped the ball. We made a mistake here. You know, it's not really in our, 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 our DNA to do such a thing, but we did, you know, mistakes happen. We're human. People We're not people. perfect. That is where, when you're honest and you look at, you know, you look at uh, baseball players and the whole steroid thing and all that, the guys that came clean and said, look, I did it like Andy Pettit. I don't mean to shout him out on here, but I mean, he really, he owned it. Hey, I did it. This is the reason I did it. It helped me prolong my career. People, they love him still, but yeah. the ones that were defiant drew a line in the sand. It's not me. No one wants to have anything to do with them. Honesty you know, and authenticity. That's it. That's it. Just be honest and open. Um, that's the big thing. You know, love your people. Be honest to your customers. Do what you say you're going to do. Treat your customer from 10 years ago like the one that you've been trying to win for three years and you finally got a meeting with him. You know, those are some big things. Love it. Brian, it was a pleasure having you on episode 117 of Automation yeah. Unplugged, my friend. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And everybody that watched, thank you so much. Hey, look, we'll get through this. Remember, we're better together than we are apart. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right, gang, there you have it. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out with us for another episode of Automation Unplugged. And uh, I've got an 11 year old standing right here and we're going to go look at jets. So on that note, I will, uh, I will see you guys and gals next time. Uh, stay safe 
And uh, as Brian said, love those uh, close to you. Definitely let them know that, that you care. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Be well.